place. Oh, what? There you go. It's on. So this log's out of alignment. I'm gonna pick it up and you straighten it out, okay? Ready? Oh, look at that! Look at the giant thing! Whoa! That is huge. I'm okay. I wonder what kind of spider that is. So that spider that we just saw was a cross orb weaver. Cross orb weaver? Mm-hmm. Are they playing? Oh yeah, I've they heard of that before. They caught that. Yeah, they make um, webs sort of circle shaped. Orb. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so it, it's a stereotypical web that they make. The one you orb. just you see like a truck web like or whatever. Orb. And also they typically, I guess, make a cross in the middle of their web. They're not uh, a problem for like biting humans. You don't have to really be mm -hmm. concerned about them like biting and then you like fall over dead or anything like, like that. Like really if they the bite you, you you'll I think get it cut. might hurt a little bit. I'm not sure, but them biting humans is like you know extremely rare. So and I don't even think it's really. Uh, I don't even think it's painful. I don't know that they didn't even mention pain in the research I did. They're a really common spider in uh, North America and they also and around the world actually. Mm -hmm. And they also have been sent to space. So that's pretty cool. Sent to space? <laughs> yeah, sent to space. <laughs> really to see oh to like outer see, space see like, if uh, they could survive i guess i don't know i'm not sure exactly oh because spiders necessarily they might not have to yeah breathe. i think scientists they like to observe how other uh, animal life forms do outside of uh the earth's atmosphere mm -hmm. um uh in in orbit i guess you could say so anyway orb orb it, ah ah yeah that's cool <laughs> all right let's get back to moving this log oh okay I'm it. Hey, come over here, come over here. I'm gonna pick this up and shift it. I want you to move this log over here, okay? Ready? Put it under. Push, push. There you go. All right, that's good. So we need to make sure these logs are straight. So just like a steering wheel, this wheel, that is this log right here, Agent X, will uh, determine the direction the log is gonna go, okay? Unless that one is at a different angle, that one's like pointing that way, then they're just gonna both roll off to the side. Yes, yes. So the wheels will just fall off the car. Yeah, so Wait, um, these were the cars a million, or like a couple hundred thousand years ago. They would go, vroom, vroom. <laughs> Fred Flintstone style. Who's Fred Flintstone? Fred Flintstone? Yeah. You don't know Fred Flintstone? No. Yabba dabba do! I've heard of him. <laughs> and his legendary wooden legendary car. Legendary cars, yeah. Uh, sort of. Uh, 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 there. there we go. Right. Oh, oh. oh, that's gonna fall off. It's okay. Oh! Oh! Huh. Pull, 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 pull. Yeah. There you go. One, two, three. Ah, 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 ah. Oh. There we go. Wait, I want to try. Oh. Okay. <laughs> oh. No, 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 that's too far. You gotta come closer. That's uh, right there. So the way we know is if we're not doing anything and it balances in the middle. Put your legs down. There. Scoot back just a little bit, just a tiny bit. We can be represented by an equation. Both the sides of this equation are the same. It's like algebra. Look at it, look All at it. All the variables on Axel's side and on our side. What if I do that? They equate to each other, they're equal. Isn't that neat? If I lean back a little if bit. If you lean back, it changes the variable. It changes your leverage, which L equals oh. leverage. <laughs> so his L is greater. Have to with my feet, barely do that. Yep, barely. Like barely touch it. Barely push up. Oh, wow. Okay, everyone, so physics lesson, okay? Physics lesson in general. Okay, so I'm at the very back of the log, okay? River, you are weighing me down. Move forward just a little bit. Okay, so this is about perfect right here. Both our feet are off the ground. Yeah. Now Axel sit in that exact spot. Okay. I'm not going up. Uh, I'm trying, but I can't go up. Because Why I'm, is that? Because I'm heavier. Because you're heavier. Okay. Because now, gravity is pushing me down more. Yeah. But scoot forward. 
Scoot forward. A uh, little more. Just a tiny bit more. Right there. That's about it. That's about the same. Look. Look. Both our feet aren't touching. That's it. Okay. So, isn't that interesting? For me, it was twice as far because I weigh about Yeah. Twice you much. had to move up a couple feet. Do you know what that means? It means that gravity on this side is heavier. What do you have that's more than river? Weight. Weight. Right. So, for one side of the equation to change something, it also needs to change something else, right? Mm -hmm. So you added something to your equation on that side of the log. You added weight. But in order to add something, for the equation to be equal on both sides, you also need to take away something. What did you take away? Le -le Le leverage. Leverage, yes. You added weight, but you took away leverage. What is up, adventure agents? Agent Tex here. We are learning about science and algebra, and we're yeah. learning how to protect Girl, ourselves from yeah. zombies. We are uh, building this uh, log cabin, zombie-proof log cabin, in the me. middle of the woods, and we're learning about physics, algebra, a whole range of other things. And that's how we do things around here at the adventure agents. Uh, life's an adventure. Love is the key. And uh, we love to learn about the world around us. And we hope that you will come along with us and learn something too. And mostly we hope that you will learn a bit through watching us about loving everyone around you. All right, well, let's, let's get back to work on this cabin. So you're both on this side? But yeah, you but if she's on my shoulders, Oh, maybe then, that'll work. You know, okay, here, turn around. All right, so maybe. No, I don't So want sit to. right there. I I'll, I'll, I'll hold you so that it'll be okay, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, ready? Yeah. And can you hold me? Oh. One hand. <laughs> Not quite. But oh, it's coming up a little bit. <laughs> wait, take her off. Did it jump? Yep. Mm hmm. All right. We got to get this thing in place. Look out. Look out, Ribby. Look out, We're Agent Hot. Are you holding it on top of that? No. No. Get it. Even ninjas can do that. <laughs> You're the rocket. Watch. Rocket back and forth. Go back and forth. Back and forth. Go back and forth until you get enough momentum. We'll learn about another element of physics. Momentum. Back and forth. Back and forth. Back. You got it. 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 Push. Push. You got it. Oh. Momentum. Ow. Are you okay? Momentum. Momentum. <laughs> Don't break your bones. Yay. Da. 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 Look out. Look out. I don't want to drop this on your foot. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. All right, all right, go hold that measuring tape on the inside of that log. On the inside. All right, we need to go. A little more this way, look out real quick. are going to be detectives and we are detectives we are agents moss detectives we're nature detectives right now <laughs> yeah moss, moss detectives <laughs> so i want you to look around okay mm -hmm. and tell me if you could see anything that looks eventful something that is out of the ordinary in nature all those things with dead leaves right there yeah you're right mm -hmm. you got it um, yeah. Well, I mean, and that, look at that giant alder. It's huge. Yeah, that's a big alder. Two of them. So you're saying that that looks unique to you in the surroundings. That but looks like it's that's out of place. That's because the giant alders are shading them. Okay. So they don't get enough sunlight, maybe. Ah, okay. So you think this tree right here, so all those dead leaves right there, is is out of sorts here in the woods because like it's just it's just this little little part it's just right this there. part right here okay so you're saying that you think that big alder right there is kind of shading out and that giant that tree. look at how many leaves that oh 
Oh yeah. So you pointed to something interesting, this big maple tree right here. Mm -hmm. Do you see anything about this big maple tree that looks different, striking, and unique? A thing snapped off. A thing snapped off? A, br a branch. There? Yeah. Okay, right there. You could see the, mm -hmm. that, that color you don't see very often here in the woods. That is a new wound on a tree. Yep. Older wounds, they'll have a darker complexion. That is very light complexion. Put two and two together here. We're going to try to find the moss that was on that branch because we're going to try to find it on the ground. That's true. That's true. We're actually here to get moss, but we'll explain in a second. But, but what, what was something else you just noticed that was different? That. Oh. What? That. that that's what? a maple branch. That a big is not branch. a tree. That is just a branch. You're right. And when those are a bunch of... Ding, ding, Agent Axe, you solved the mystery. Wait, wait, you haven't quite solved it yet. Okay, <laughs> so how do that and that right there connect? Because so, the branches are longer. Because the branches are longer. Mm -hmm. well, well, but look. That's, that's look. something. But so that yes. right there. Yeah, I even see where it split off. See? Ah, it's yep. Now come on over here. Let me show you something. Look at this. Look at that right there. That and that match, don't they? Yeah. What do you think, Agent Hummingbird? The branches well, were really long, so they both connected. Yes, they did connect at one time. But what happened here is that we had uh, historic winds, like 50, 60 mile an hour gusts here. And it, that's what I was about to say, except that, this oh, over. that was a while ago. The fresh wounds, that's fresh. Like that's fresh, but that was only that was only about a month ago. This this can be a month old and still look like that. So Agent Axe, come over here. So if you lift this moss up right here, you can kind of see that that fresh wound right there uh, as well. Oh, there's something thick enough. Yes, you're right. No, that is. So the moss came to us. Axel found something really neat. I think that's a yellow spotted centipede. No. Bring it over here. They yellow that banded big. centipede. Oh, Daddy, that is look. beautiful. Wow. Look at it. I think that's called a yellow banded centipede. Yellow, yellow spotted, spotted centipede. Oh, centipede. it has a distinct smell. Um, smell it. <laughs> Daddy. It, smell it. Is it a good smell? Yes. It smells like um, freshly baked Whoa. fast food. Whoa. That does. It has some kind of a perfume to it. Hmm. It's not that bad. It but, smells uh, like sort of like cilantro. It doesn't smell appetizing. It smells like cilantro a little bit. Daddy, yeah. look, look. Oh, yes. Agent Hummingbird here just got us a piece of this moss. Agent X, what did you say about the roof? The roof? Of our of our hut that is next to our cabin. That's not going to protect us at all from the rain. You don't think so? Not very much. Not enough? N no. Okay. No, no, no. I think he's right. Today is the last day that we have to prepare for the rain. As much as I want to continue to build the log cabin, and I will, I'm concerned that our roof on the lean-to that we made next to the log cabin, that uh, primitive lean-to, is legs. going to leak. Oh, that is so beautiful. But feel the legs. Wow. It started to tickle. What an awesome creature. My finger smells like um, oh. some perfume. Oh, yeah, it does. It smells like some kind of sweet, sweet perfume. We are going to spend a little bit of time today gathering some more moss off of these big leaf maples. I have found that the there is no, there's absolutely no reason to try to get moss anywhere else besides off of the big leaf maples. They are by far the biggest carrier of this moss here in the Pacific Northwest. All place. maples, because see, even the vine maples, they have a thin layer of moss. Some of the vine maples Come. have some, but it's not enough. I am climbing up this tree to get moss, and the moss actually kind of makes it difficult to get a good grip on the tree. So I have to get as much of it off, off as I can. And also the moss can hide as you can see here, the fact that a tree branch is really super, super rotten. I'm very tempted to try to balance myself by grabbing that. That's not a good idea. That's a fatal idea. <laughs> it can be. It could, could be okay, but probably not. So anyways, uh, I'm going to avoid touching that branch. So what I'm really trying to get at is this right here. That's the gold mine. That's the good stuff. So I gotta make it to there, H and X. Ah, ha, ha. The bigger big leaf maples are the best by far. And so we're gonna be harvesting this moss. So what we learned about these maple trees is that they have a, what? 
What kind of relationship? Bio something relationship. Uh-huh. Bio relation. Uh-huh. Bio relationship. A symbiotic. Mm -hmm. They have a symbiotic relationship with this moss. And what type of symbiotic <coughs> relationship is it? It's where the Remember there's a few different it. kinds. There's a parasitic symbiotic relationship we learned last time. There's parasitic. There's uh there's that's we're both benefits. That's the one where one party gets hurt and the other one benefits. And then there is one that uh They both benefit. They both benefit. Like um the and, fish and the sea turtles. Yeah, and then there's one uh, one where kind of one symbiotic benefits. relationship where one benefits and the other has like a neutral effect. It doesn't hurt it or it doesn't help it. Daddy. Which I actually sort of disagree with, Daddy. like I explained in the last uh, deal. When it comes to this if. moss and this trees, I think that the moss has actually had a beneficial effect on the trees. We just can't see it. Because and it might be negative, like exist, um, the moss but. in the winter when the moss is on the trees, it might get... Um, some of the ranch is really heavy and they snap off. Yeah, the, the trees are very, very, uh, they need moisture. And so maybe the moss ended up helping it a bit to keep that moisture Well, maybe it also breaks it some really of the dry. branches. Maybe it also breaks some of the yeah, branches. I don't know how we would test that theory, but uh, anyways, I'm not sure. But uh, maybe we it's, it's my theory that that's actually not correct. But <laughs> I'm just uh, I'm just little old agent tech, so maybe I'm, I'm wrong here. And I, I admit I could be wrong. <laughs> you got it? Yeah. Okay. So anyways, I love playing scientists, being scientists, because I believe I am a scientist, and we can all be scientists. Just paying attention to our surroundings, making observations, coming up with theories, and testing those theories uh, over the span of well, our lifetime, really. Scientific observation never, ever, ever ends. It never ends. Nope. <laughs> well, unless humanity goes along with it. <laughs> <laughs> Unless we cease existing. Well, I don't think we'll ever cease existing, but uh, that's a whole other conversation for a whole other day. <laughs> I think change takes place. We never cease to exist. We just, just change. Yep. Oh, we turn into animals. Uh, oh, I mean, science classifies us as animals, technically, so. <laughs> so what'd made, you make? I made River a little dagger. That Do you have your knife? Is epic. Can I use your knife real quick? That is so neat. On to the teeth! <laughs> Have you ever heard that term? No. Do you know no. that that's what that means? Pirate. Yeah, it means that they have a sword in each hand. They got a, a pistol in one hand, a sword in another, and they got a dagger in their mouth. Armed to the teeth. Um, like like you might have some arrows stuck in your head. <laughs> oh, yeah. And they're like stabbing people with them. Wait, they might have, they have a spiky helmet and they go, I don't know how these kids became so brutal. It wasn't from their father, I swear. Oh, no. I think we're out of gas. He's here. Oh. Please, let me talk without you squealing, whining, and fighting. So, 
some of you may not know this, but Agent Axe and Agent Hummingbird, they fight and argue. Probably just like your kids do. Uh, we just tend not to show that stuff too much. Although occasionally we do. What if kids are watching it? Kids don't have kids. Kids don't have kids? Unless they're kids aren't supposed to be kids. watching this. Unless they have their parents' permission. This video is not made for kids. It's made <laughs> to be family friendly. So I let my kids watch it, but uh, I'm really making this video, these videos, this new video series. It's for dads. It's for dads. Grandmas and grandpas and uncles and aunts and friends and kids and moms and whatever. Anyone can watch, but I'm making it with dads in mind. So, anyways. All right, pick up that moss. Let's head out. What I'm trying to say is that it's very difficult getting down out of trees. And it's very difficult getting down things. It's more difficult than getting up, and there's many reasons for that, but that I'm not going to get into right now. But what I am going to talk about is risk. And it is important... Um, to learn risk, and I think at a very early age, it's important to learn uh, physical risk, and it can help you in learning risk in many different areas of your life. Risk when it comes to climbing a tree and learning what the do's and don'ts are of that at an early age can help to shape your brain to understand other risks like uh, the risk of driving in a vehicle or the risk uh, to, of exposing yourself to potentially deadly disease. There are risks that we take in life, and it is important, I think, for children to, young, to learn at a very young age how to manage risk. When uh, Agent Hummingbird there was really young, I would teach her how to climb trees and how to learn the risk there. Because if you fall from two feet up and you're a toddler, you, you kind of be like, put two and two, that falls from two foot up, it hurt that much. Now I'm four foot up and I'm looking down and I'm like, now if I fall from four foot up, it's gonna hurt twice as bad. And I didn't like that before, so I'm gonna be extra careful this time. I think it's important to learn that. But if you keep them, oh no, don't fall from two feet, don't fall from two feet, well then they'll never learn about not falling from four feet or six feet or eight feet or ten feet and then well then you're in a serious situation <laughs> when it could have been not so serious at first and they learned quickly and that's how I learned when I was young. I am doing some risk assessment about how to get down from this tree. It is difficult. I made this ladder out of this tree branch right here but coming down it isn't as easy as coming up and so what? one thing I could do is I could I could hang off of this branch and drop down to there. Now the what? thing about dropping down to there is you never know what is down there? Uh, it, it's a big pile of leaves there, but if the dirt, if there's a little hole below one of those leaves, a little mole hole, and I land there, that could be a broken ankle, like that, like instantly. And it, it's a very serious, real possibility that my feet are expecting to land on something solid, but one of them hits a curved surface and it just twists and breaks. It can be kind of a bad idea to jump down into an area where you don't know what you're going to hit. You, you gonna tell me, is that all pretty even? Stomp around there. Right there. Okay, now stomp around right there. Just kind of stomp around. You feel any rocks or holes or anything? Right here there's a little incline in the ground, but okay. I'll put some moss right there. Well, that's okay. As long as I'll it's not... i right Okay. <laughs> all right. Another thing is, will this branch hold my weight? Now, one thing I see with this branch is that it's got little green shoots coming out of it. The tree is still trying to grow through this branch, which tells me that this branch is a stable branch. And so that's one thing you've got to look for when you're, when you're going to be hanging on branches, is you've got to look for green, fresh growth on that branch. And if there's green, fresh growth, it's a good chance that that branch will hold you. Not necessarily, but it's a good chance. And so if you don't see any of that, don't trust that branch because it could be completely rotten inside. I'm going to throw you down on the moss bed. Ready? Okay. A nice, soft, mossy bed. Ready? Uh -huh. Yeah! Wait, it fell right in the crack where a rock was right next to it. Oh. Oh. Okay. Mission accomplished. What? Good work, Agent X. Is it recording? It is.
Okay, more flame. So Agent Axe, he did a great job. Oh, there's some. Getting this oh, going. Oh. You, you still got some coals getting, in there. It's getting it. So let's take these big sticks off. One thing to, to note, here's a good way of thinking about it. When you have a little fire going, before you have some good coals underneath it, you never want hungry flames up in the air without something to eat. If there's flames up in the air, oh, oh there you go, there you go, there you go. Give them something to eat. That flame, feed it, feed it, feed it, and feed it something that it can handle, right? So if you're a little person, you may not want as big of a meal as a bigger person, right? So feed little flames little food, but don't starve the little flames because they will go out really quick. And you need to have airflow. Don't blow from the top, blow from the side. There you go. Ow! Oh, yep. Yeah. Blow from the side. That'll also keep the smoke out of your face. Keep blowing on it. There you go. Now get those coals going. Ow! Oh, careful. There you go. You got it. All right, now this shouldn't go out if you keep blowing on it and you keep feeding those little flames. But don't block the flames. That's another thing you don't want to do. You don't want to block them. You know, you can learn a lot about relationships by learning about fire and how to tend fire, how to kindle the flames in a fire. You do the same thing in relationships. Um, relationships kindle sometimes... Your, I've heard of the term kindle your relationship. Yeah, exactly. It's a very common term, or it's a very well-known term. Um, and you want to kindle that fire, you know? Um, and it can be very delicate sometimes. And sometimes you got a good fire with some heavy coals, and man, you can afford to, to not be as quite as careful. But, but you have to pay attention to those little, little flames, especially when the relationship is fragile like that. Kindle that flame. Sometimes there's just a little spark, but if you don't kindle the flame, well, the relationship can just die out. That's kind of how love is. It's like a fire. You can also get burned. There's risk and there's reward <laughs> in relationships. They are the most rewarding thing that you can ever, ever invest in. Relationships with other conscious beings, human beings. And doggies, like Finn. And dog. You know the term, I'm a man's best friend? <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, yep. All right, keep that going, get it going good. I'm hungry, Chef Axe, I'm hungry. It's okay, you know, just, just hold on, it's okay, it'll light, it'll... There it is, there it is, hold on, okay. Alright, hold on, hold on, let's let the flame, hold on, hold on. Hold on. We want that flame, okay, okay, now you can put them on. Now you put them on, there you go. Put them on. Wait, you sort of hold it over. It's okay, this is kind of too bundled up. You want it to be, here, put this on right here. Like sort of a part of Put these like right that. there, there you go. Yeah, put them right on top of there. There you go. Right on top. Right over the flame. There you go. Okay. Just like that. Here. What is this, Daddy? Now remember, see those flames are hungry, Evie, yeah. so you gotta put stuff on it, okay?
Yeah. Spoon for you. Spoon for you. Mm. Your daddy gets the big spoon. Mm. <laughs> oh my goodness. So what do we have here, Chef Axe? What is this called? I've never liked it before, like all together, but now I love it. You love it together? Mm. All right, this looks like stir fry. You did a fantastic job here. Give me five. This looks delicious. Wait, is this a Saturday but, from? Now it's time for the taste test. So I absolutely do not like bell peppers cooked. But now you do? No, I don't. Oh, you don't? You well, still don't like them cooked? Now I do. Now you do from your wooden no. spoon. <laughs> no. All right, let's let's give this a try. Man, we worked hard today. We worked very hard today. Mm. Mm. Oh my goodness. Mm. Chef Axe, you outdid yourself today. This is delicious. Where did you learn to cook st stir fry like this? From you. From me? Mm-hmm. Really? Mm. Who knew? <laughs> and I, we used to I get thought, a lot of I thought it was from his uh, many travels around the world. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna mm. Oh, mm. Even Agent Tracker isn't doing it. She's looking at a butter can right now. The butter bowl. <laughs> you gave her the rest of the butter. This is the best food mm, that I've had in like so long. You did a fantastic job. This is actually his first time cooking stir fry. He followed instructions very well, and I'm impressed. You you did a fantastic job at every level of this. I'm really impressed. I remember when I first learned to make food. The first thing I learned to make was waffles. No, yeah, we fine. didn't eat waffles, so <laughs> with spaghetti. Stir fry. Yeah, I learned to put noodles in a pot of boiling water and then take them out whenever they tasted like they were ready. And then I would just pour some sauce on it, and that was it. <laughs> that, that was that was me learning to eat. Um, uh, other than that, I just I made cereal. So <laughs> except cereal, you just have to yeah. pour some in. in uh, the this is just amazing. The flavor is just in, in, incredible. I think Devin would like it. Bell except peppers she can't have it. and uh, the snow Please, peas. What are those? Those are snow that. peas, right? There's are uh, mung beans, I think, and um, mung bean sprouts. sprouts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we have chicken and beef in there. And boy, oh, that rice, that organic rice. Oh man, that turned out perfect. Wow. 
This is my favorite part of the show. Hands down. Chip facts. This is my favorite part of the show. Mm hmm. And Chef Hummingbird. <laughs> Maybe one day you can make a meal. You want? Do you want to cook one of the meals one day? Okay. Or Chef Hummingbird can do that help. someday. Oh yeah. They good? Huh? All right, adventure agents. Well, as you can see, we didn't even get to unload the moss from. Oh, the but tomorrow it's going to be soaking wet. Tomorrow is going to be our last nice day here in the Pacific Northwest until the really? rain nonstop no, comes. But, but then we're not going to be able to put that on because it's going to be so much heavier because it's going to weigh like 50 pounds each time we take a load. So maybe we should make time to put it on tomorrow. You want to do that? Yeah. Right, I think so. That was too. a lot of words. Yeah. I said. But it's going to get so heavy that, that we're not going to be able to carry it because it's going to weigh like 400 pounds because it's going to be too heavy load, even for yeah, one Once load. that moss gets soaked with water, it can hold a lot of water, which is great, which is why it'll make great roofing material. Which um, is also why I'm going to be scared to sleep under that roof because it's going to snap and hurt us very badly. Nope. I made it really secure. I put some pretty heavy duty stuff on there. So I, I got to tell you everyone, this roof is the coolest roof. I've ever seen. I mean, it might be a little bias here, but it's got licorice root ferns growing on it. I'm just amazed. I love this roof. I, I love it. I don't love it in the same way that I love Agent Hummingbird there, or you Agent. Love it in an object love way. <laughs> I should probably just say that I like it, but but uh, I, I like that roof a lot. I'll, I'll say that. I, I don't like saying I love things because I really don't. Um, Love is a word that I reserve for very special things. And uh, I mean, very special uh, things being people. It seems as though the day has ended. And so we're gonna have to say goodbye. Well, we didn't get as much work as we wanted to do to get done today. Oh, I found it. I found the other chocolate. It was in your pocket. Ooh. Chocolate. Ooh. We're having a special in your treat, a special after dinner. There is chocolate in your, your pocket. pocket. <laughs> All right, everyone. Well, Axel and River. I just want to say thank you so much for helping today. You did a great job. High fives, both of you. Great Chefaxel. work, Agent. Chefaxel. You help with that moss. And, and a fire. And you help with the fire. You did a great job. Now, because you made this fire, five is on the roof. Dog. <laughs> Baby, get off there. Get off our roof. Our dog's on the roof. She was laying down right here. You oh just my God. She's <laughs> digging herself a little hole. Look, look. <laughs> She's ruining our roof. Dog. Oh, the poor little dog. Hey, so go get her a little bit of moss. She, she's, she's wanting to lay down. Faven loves to make a little bed. Go get her a nice big chunk of moss and bring it in here so we can make a bed for her. We got, we forgot about our doggy agent. She needs a place to sleep. All right, there you go, agent tracker. Come on. There you go. There you go. Yeah. 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 Get that. There you go, there you go. 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 Look at her, she's like, yeah. Oh, you like it? You like your new bed? You huh? like your new bed? Yeah. yeah. You like your new bed. Yeah. Oh, no. Don't Don't forget make about it. our doggy agents. Okay, everyone. Well, like I was saying, I'm so grateful Wait. for Agent Axe. Oh, pfft. hey, be careful, okay? That, let's not do that, okay? Axel, Axel. Don't burn the moss. We need the moss. Shoot. Oh, it's just a tiny bit of it. The dog. <laughs> What are you doing? <laughs> She's like, no, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, this moss is much more thick and comfy, though. Oh my gosh. We, we make her a bed of moss, and then she's like, no, I like your roof better. <laughs> oh, I don't have the heart. We'll just leave her there. Look at her. Yay. All right, doggy, there's your bed. <laughs> you make your bed, you can lie in it now. You're going to regret that when it starts raining at night. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> She's no, coming back no. with us anyways. Yeah, she, you are fated tracker. You are gonna, you, you just, she, she won't like it once it's all wet. She won't even try to sleep there. She'll like her bed in here because it'll be nice and dry. <laughs> all right, everyone. Well, <laughs> we gotta, we gotta end this video. On the next episode, we are going to build the first logs. We're gonna get them down. We already got two of them down, um, but we're gonna get them Send in them place. Mommy. I want to get four more logs at least in place in the next episode. So we are going to make it happen. We're going to make it happen. We're going to finish putting Dad? that roof on. Yep. What's up? So tomorrow me and mommy are doing the last one on the roof? Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Hmm. I don't know. Okay, well, remember. I heard you. I heard you. <laughs> 
All right, everyone, remember, life is an adventure, and love is the key, and we love you. And we're preparing for the zombies here in our zombie uh, bunker. <laughs> Rawr. Rawr. We learned a lot today. Uh. That Agent X, you solved the mystery of the tree. Yeah? Rawr. The tree that fell? Rawr. Rawr. Are you a zombie? She's a zombie. <laughs> hey, I love you even if you're a zombie. Yeah, we gotta love zombies. Yep. Sometimes I'm a zombie. Everyone can be a zombie, so. Zombies love your brains. And Zombies your brain love your brains. You. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. We need to... Okay. All right. Well, you gotta love zombies too, but uh, we want, we're not gonna let them in our cabin. Sorry, because then they'll try to eat our brains. We'll love them from a distance. <laughs> but Carrie, we love you, zombies. Just don't come any closer. They'll sneeze something on us. <laughs> All right. And it will make us yeah. turn into Age of Tex out. We'll see you on the next adventure, okay? Shafax out. Shafax out. Agent Shafax out. <laughs> Agent Hummingbird? Uh, Agent. Alex Agent. <laughs> uh, <laughs> an Agent. Agent Hummingbird out. <laughs>